Welcome to another episode of another Jags podcast, the podcast, the podcast <laughs> Podcast is recording. If you're listening to the podcast, you missed about 10, 15 minutes of our, on our video where we kind of rambled about Jalen Ramsey, but this is episode 76, the linebacker episode. It is. It was Jalen Ramsey and Yannick Ngakwe. So if you want to listen to our banter about Jalen Ramsey and Ngakwe, you can go to our YouTube and you can watch our live video. And I encourage that because it was straight gold. It was gold. So make sure you go watch it. Um, you can follow us on Twitter at Another Jags Pod, Facebook, Instagram, Another Jags Podcast, um, and like we said on YouTube. So we talked about Ngakwe not being paid. We talked about Jalen Ramsey in the Brinks truck. You missed that. Sorry, guys. Sorry, podcasters. But some more news. That's not really Jaguar related, but it's like AFC South related. And Ooh. we have a question on YouTube from Zach Jones. Hey, Zach. And he says, how do you feel about Taylor Luan news? Feeling better about week three Titans game now? Joey? I will not pick the Jaguars to beat the Titans until the Jaguars beat the Titans. But do you feel better about it? That's the question. There, there's no feeling whatsoever <laughs> until we beat the Titans. Uh, they have our number. Yeah, but I felt great about them last season until we got ran over by a running back that I love to death because he's from here, but that didn't do anything up to that point. So no, I don't feel any better about it. I feel better, and here's why. Because not only are we playing them early in the season when we potentially could be healthy, but we also are playing them on Thursday night. So they're coming off of a short week without their starting left tackle with a pretty dog poo offensive line as it is. With a, who knows who's going to be quarterback by then. Mariota, Tannehill, and they have Derrick Henry. I suspect we'll be better against the run this year. We added some stout run-stopping linebackers, which we'll preview here in a minute. So I, feel, I do feel better. I mean, you're bringing like facts and like actual football stuff into it i'm bringing optimism to this show joey you are you episode said that, 76 and, and, and everybody missed that as well in the youtube clip that jason is going to be optimistic this is I, i'm, I'm be more optimistic i guess i have to be pessimistic then because until we beat the stinking titans consistently i'm not saying we're going to beat them ever i don't care who they have what's going on i'm picking them to win yeah i mean that's fair but but he's asking do you feel better i feel better because Taylor Luan is a beast, and he failed a drug test, and we suspect PEDs. But he, his, his words are, at least he passed a polygraph saying that he didn't knowingly take them. <laughs> That's awesome, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> I Man. mean, you know, whatever. I would love to take a polygraph to see what I could pass. If he got suspended for that, though, that's not his first hit, right? Don't you get? I think one, four games no, is the first hit. Is it? I thought you got one. Nobody hears about. You get put in the program, and then your first one's four. It may be the case. I'm not too familiar I mean, with way, the look drug at the guy, protocol. Dude, he's obviously like eating it with his Wheaties. So, Seriously, yeah. Dude, I, mean, like this, like, you, I could have looked at that man. And told you, yeah, right, he right, doesn't right, need a test like, or a lie detector. <laughs> <laughs> look at you, bro. Yeah, the eyeball <laughs> test. He would have failed that one. But yeah, I mean, I guess being realistic, obviously, that is a huge pickup for us. Yeah, I mean, their their line is questionable. They got one good guy. They're paying more than everybody in the league, and. Outside of that, dude, bring it. I think we're going to eat him up. Mariota's going to have another broke leg and busted elbow and whatever else. So I don't think Mariota will make it too long. I mean, I think Tannehill, and, and I like Tannehill. I think Tannehill will Tannehill's be better than Mariota. Awesome, yeah. But Tannehill could also throw, you know, six interceptions or six TDs. I'm that's sure against true. us, he'll throw six TDs. And his and pocket presence isn't great. I know he can escape pressure with his feet, but yeah. his pocket presence isn't great. I, I like our D line against that O line, and I like our. Secondary against him. Was that three? What's the third, fourth game of the season? Yeah, week three. Three? Okay. Thursday night. So. It's going to be one and three to start. All right, got it. The Titans? No, us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the linebacker episode. If you've missed our past breakdowns, we've done an entire offensive breakdowns. We're to the defense. This is our first defensive position. And we start with the linebackers because it's probably our worst position. This linebacker. is really where I hit my stride because I know so much about football and defense. So I'm ready. The problem is, is that like these guys aren't. I mean, we have a pretty. Th we're pretty thin. Like, let me just tell you who we have. Okay, we got Miles Jack. Everyone knows Miles Jack. He's a good player. We'll get in more into him later. We have Jake Ryan. He's six two, two forty, out of Michigan. He was a fourth round pick in two thousand fifteen. He was really good with Green Bay for his first three years, but then he tore his ACL in training camp last year. So we're not getting too far into it, but. That's just who we have. You can't really team. gloss over that though, because I mean he's probably one of the biggest. Yeah, upside but we're gonna jump into team, him. Right? We're gonna jump okay. into him. Right, but I'm enough. just I'm just going through the who we have on the roster. Fair enough. 
Okay, then we have Leon Jacobs. Most people are familiar with Leon Jacobs. We drafted him last year. Late pick. Real strong guy. Like, his pictures of him, like, with his shirt off went viral because of his muscle mass. Buff Bagwell. Yeah, I mean, he... He, he could be a pro wrestler. Like, the guy's like a specimen. Yeah, didn't play a lot last year, but when he played, he, he played pretty well. Yeah, it wasn't bad. So that's everyone that's, retur- that's returning. I'm mean, not Jake Ryan, but that's everyone that people that like, at least have a like, decent experience. Really, that's it? Yeah. So then we drafted Quincy Williams this year. He's 5'11", 225 out of Murray State. He's brother of Quinnen Williams, who was drafted in the first round by the Jets. And we'll get to more about him in a little bit, but basically undersized, hard-hitting guy, played more of a box safety at Murray State. He's going to transition to the linebacker, so we'll see how that works. Here's where we start getting to the bottom of the barrel. That's it? We're already at the bottom? We are already at the bottom of the so barrel. So we're, we're deep is what you're saying. Yeah. So then we got Rameek, Will- R- Rameek Wilson. <laughs> Rameek Wilson. Who, First name. Uh, so threw you off. Rameek Wilson. Who he, uh, he went to Georgia. So Georgia fans may be familiar with the name. He only played nine games last year. We'll get to him probably in segment two or three. But we won't spend a lot of time on him, as you can imagine. Then we get to the undrafted free agents. We're looking at James on Wualu. He's from Notre Dame. He was undrafted free agent in 2017. Uh, Which he's, we also got from another team, right? Yeah. He was with the Chargers, undrafted free agent, 49ers. Mainly a special teams and a practice squad guy. I don't think he's even seen real snaps. Oh, he'll be practice squad for real. Yep. No way. Connor Strachan. It could be Strachan. It could be Strachan. I don't know. We have to ask a Boston College fan because he went to Boston College. Six foot, 230, undrafted free agent. We'll get more to him later in the later segments when people turn off the podcast. <laughs> Thank God, because I won't have much to say about that. <laughs> then we have Joe Giles Harris, undrafted free agent, 6'2", 234 out of Duke. Ran a 4'740", not terribly fast, but uh, is a good tackler. Again, we'll get more to him. And obviously, the elephant in the room is where I'm missing Telvin Smith, who led the team in tackles, but also led the team in missed tackles. So there's that. I mean... He- he had a bad year last year. He did. He what did. about Lorente McCray? Is he not? He's a D end. Well, but he can also play strong side, right? Yeah, but he doesn't. He always lines up on the edge, and he lines up on the D line. So he will not help so, out the linebacker core. Now nah, we're going like, like a specialty. Yeah, I know that's kind of like a gray area. It's kind of like a. But he's he's With that um, amount of depth. You don't see him possibly slipping in. No, that's a good question. I couldn't find very many snaps last year where he played a traditional linebacker role. Does that mean he could do it? He's probably in the same boat as Josh Allen as far as is he going to play linebacker snaps. We could, we, we will see. Just saying Allen could get put in there as well. That's a question on Twitter we're going to get to in a little bit. All right, fair enough. Here's just a little interesting stat before we jump into who we think the starters will be. And before we jump into the Twitter questions. 2,024 snaps last year between Telvin Smith and Miles Jack. 2,024. Mm-hmm. Keep, keep that number in mind. The next, the next most snaps amongst linebackers on the team, Leon Jacobs, 146. Oh, I'm not a mathematician, but that's a small percentage. After him, Nick DeLuca, 76 snaps. Mm. After him, Blair Brown, five snaps. And Brown is not on the team anymore, correct? No, he's not. Neither is Nick DeLuca. So, well, you're looking at basically... 250, almost three, maybe almost 300 snaps between everyone else, and then 2,024 with Telvin and Miles. So who takes Telvin's thousand snaps? That's a good question, and that's what we're going to try to answer here on the Linebacker Podcast after this break. I assume. No, that, 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 that was a good tease. Man. That, that seemed like a that good. That seemed to be their break right there, dude. We got to plug stuff <laughs> in somewhere. <laughs> seems like man, we've been doing this for 76 <laughs> episodes, and you can't take a. Damn. I can't even hit the record at the right time on the Damn. podcast. Who, who are these people? Yeah. So, um, no, that did seem like a good time to like, like a trailer, like a commercial. <laughs> but no, we're going to continue we're on. Keep going. That's why people like us because uh, we just talked for an, over an hour <laughs> about the Jaguars. All right. So let's get to the Twitter questions because there's some good ones. First question. This question, we're taking this question first because it got the most action on our Twitter thread. If you ask us questions on Twitter, we will definitely read them or comments. And I'm going to tease real quick because I teased this too late in the podcast last time and then no one probably heard it because who's going to listen to us talk for an hour? Okay, we're doing a free fantasy league, another Jags podcast fantasy league. It's free to join Ooh. and we're going to give prizes like every week for the highest points 
Uh, we're going to mail you like um, apparel that we have and things like that. Sign sign eight by tens of Jason. And yeah, I. we're going to maybe headshots of ours. Us. Absolutely. Maybe we'll send you a Miles Jack candle like the one we have right here. If you're watching live on the YouTube. I was going to save that it. for when we talk about Miles Jack. Because, we'll get there. But yeah. yeah. But anyways, it's going to be free. But it, obviously, there's going to be more than like 12 people that want to join. It? I mean, shouldn't we set it at 12 though? We're not doing no, we're, we're going to do 12. Yeah. This 12, is going to be hardcore league. Really 12 is No, we're going to do hardcore. And we have two of the spots. All right. So it's 10 so people. There's 10 people left. And so we're going to choose the 10 by the people that ask the most questions. The most questions. That's a great way right. to do it. So just giving you a heads up now, we're probably going to do that in a couple of weeks. So you have like two weeks to get your questions in. Fair enough. Someone who does ask a lot of questions, and we love their questions because they're good, is Noah Bennett. And he's at the Noah Bennett. Yeah. And he says, what should the baseline be? For expectations for Jake Ryan coming off of an ACL, ACL tear. Jake Ryan towards ACL like week nine or ten um, last year with the Packers. Oof. So, um, what are your expectations for Jake Ryan? I mean, it's not like he's a wide receiver. So, I mean, you can come back from an ACL quicker than say like a Marquise Lee or somebody like that. But my expectations were very high when he gets in. I mean, when that when is that going to be is the question. He's going to miss a lot of work early. He's going to be kind of out of rhythm with the defense if he's missing games. But, I mean, that guy has a lot of instincts. He's a solid, solid position player. So my expectations are super high because they have to be because we don't have much other options. That's a good point. And as an optimist, I'm going to say I'm excited for Jake Ryan because – he actually played really well in tours, until he tore his ACL. In the three seasons that he was with the Packers, he played 15 games, 16 games, and then 17 games. That's pretty good. 213 total tackles. Like, the guy is a good player. Yeah. We posted his highlights on Twitter. Most people were pretty excited. One guy did mention that a lot of his tackles were arm tackles. and it means he's strong. Yeah, that could be as strong, and it, you can't really give a fair assessment because I really just took like the best looking plays and and put them on there because no one's gonna watch a Twitter video over thirty seconds long. So I just picked like the tackles he made in space where you could really see like what he d- could do and things like that. But I'm pretty excited for him because I think he's gonna be a good player. If we look back at like his history with the Packers, Packers fans liked him a lot, and he graded out pretty well on PFF in his last couple years there. But he's going to have to step up. And I think if we are expecting someone to take over the snaps for Telvin Smith, because it's, it's over 1,000. I mean, Telvin Smith played over 1,000 snaps last year. So I expect Jake Ryan to take a lot of them, especially in our base package of 4-3, early downs, beginning of games, beginning of halves. I think he's going to take a good chunk of that. I think they're going to give his snaps away by committee meaning I think DJ Hayden will take more snaps at a nickel. I think you could see uh, Ronnie Harrison rolled down into the box more. I think you could see even some more like jumbo packages with a guy like Lawrence McCray on the field, with a guy like Taven Bryan lined up more on the inside. Your boy, Taven. Uh, look, man, they're going to have to do something. Okay, well, That's 1,000 snaps i got to replace. So, all right, let me, let me finish my take on... Ryan, and then right. I'll throw something out there that's right. probably stupid and crazy, but right. I want your take on it. Right. So, Ryan, I mean, an ACL injury in the NFL right now is what, 12 months? Right? About right? Depending yeah. on your position group? Yeah. So he's like 11 months in right now. And where he plays, he could be fully recovered at this point. And do you think the Jaguars really pick him up if they didn't think he'd be ready? Medically? I think they would take a flyer on a guy that played pretty well. Okay. But, I mean, do you, do you think he's going to be ready... By the first game of the season. Yeah. I think so, too. I mean, he tore his ACL in training camp last year. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I think he's going to be ready. I think he will fit into our scheme. Our defensive backs, our entire defense is going to help him. I mean, that's what it does for everybody. We have such a good defense that everybody plays better because there's less pressure on him. He doesn't have to be the man. Yeah, that's true. So, I think the upside potential for him is huge, and he is going to be a huge part of our defense. If not, we're kind of in trouble with that. So, segue to that. Josh Allen... Could he plug in that spot? I don't you, think you throw, so. You throw, throw money in Ngakwe and plug him in there. I mean, why not? He's a huge dude. Let's, let's use this time to transition to a Twitter question from Jason Rat, and he's at RatHCP. And this is a shout-out to the state of Utah. The Utes. The Utes. And he said, do you believe Todd Wash 
when he said Josh Allen will strictly be a pass rusher and won't be playing linebacker. I don't believe Josh will be lining up as a linebacker, but will he drop into coverage from DN position from time to time? He absolutely will. There's no way possible they will not use him like that. He's too much of a physical freak not to. Too fast. He's too smart. I mean, he could do that at Kentucky. He could just be the rusher because that's all. That's what they needed. I think he absolutely will. If if we're going off of like the past of Todd Wash, is he drops a DN into coverage? Watching Dante Fowler, watching Yannick Ngakwe, about once per game. It's not gonna be that way this year. You think it'll be more? Absolutely. It, I mean, if he doesn't, he's stupid. Well, the thing is, is like if you play a good quarterback with with good like awareness, and he recognizes that, like it's an easy hitch, easy slant. That's easy, like like right there to the receiver. But to a quarterback that's not so good, like a Ryan Tannehill or Marcus Mariota. That's how you get interceptions. So it's kind of this balanced game. I think it kind of depends on who you play. We play a lot of good quarterbacks this year. That's Drew more Brees. Of a, that's more of a gimmick play, then. It's not. I mean, it's, it's called a zone blitz. Not so much gimmicky as it is like you use it rarely to get a turnover. Okay. And because you understand that it's high risk, high reward. So you basically. hold that in your back pocket until the right moment and hoping it pays off. I hope you catch him off guard. Yeah. So when you have a guy like Josh Allen who has great athletic ability, you may be able to use it more. And Gakwe, Fowler, they were okay at it. I think Josh Allen is better than both those guys as far as being able to drop into coverage. He showed at Kentucky he's able to do that. But I don't think we're going to see a lot of linebacker snaps out of him, just like Todd Wash said. So, I mean, if Ryan's not ready, and if anybody else gets injured, though, I mean, I'm talking more of like, hey, Pause ain't coming back. He's not walking through those doors. I mean, you're going to have to make adjustments. There's not like you're going to are they going to make some moves like in the off season when people drop people out of camp, get some just bodies off the, I mean, that, that we don't want to hear that. Well, this is the optimistic like take, right? I mean, so I'll answer that question. I mean, Leon Jacobs takes like 900 more snaps than he did last season. I mean, yeah, I mean, I was going to say, I think Leon Jacobs is the guy that steps up, So he's the one. Yeah. Cause I like Leon Jacobs and, I mean, Leon Jacobs, 12 tackles, only one missed tackle. Here's the only issue with Leon Jacobs. And this is going to sound really bad, and it's not as bad as it sounds, but it's not good. Okay, so have I, have I like, primed you? You have. have I'm, I'm, re- okay. I'm ready. I, All right. I'm thinking this so, is, like, lukewarm water. <laughs> so they've targeted Leon Jacobs seven times last year. Meaning other teams? Yes. Okay. Meaning the receiver that he was responsible for, he was targeted. Like the quarterback picked up on the fact, hey, rookie's on this dude. I'm throwing that way. Maybe that was the thought process, but whatever it was, sure. Leon Jacobs was covering the guy that was being targeted. Okay. Seven times, six receptions were made. <laughs> now, I know that sounds like, like really bad, and it's not great, but you have to understand, like a linebacker picking up a slot receiver or even a running back out of the backfield. It's not the easiest it's, thing. No, and you're, you're going to get a reception, but if you make the tackle for a yard or two. I mean, how many times was Telvin Smith like so out of position? You're like, dude, what the hell is that guy doing? Though? Well, I mean, Telvin Smith led the team in this tackle, so that's probably not a good. But my point is. Yeah, is no, that you're right. He's taking Telvin snaps. If he's off on a bunch of plays, it's not like it's that much different than last year. I mean, Telvin's living off his 2017 season. Yeah. I mean, honestly, he was horrible last year. Yeah, I mean, he, it was his worst year since his rookie year, no doubt about it, and that may attribute to some maybe of his like mental issues, if that's what they are. I don't want to speculate. It seems like it is what it is, but... but do we have any Telvin specific questions? Um, we do not. Okay, I so guess I'll, people do not care about I'll throw Telvin's it out bet. there, because it, it, it's weird to me that one of our marquee players falls off this cliff, has all these issues, has all these like weird you know, tweets and Instagram videos... And is he going to be there? Is he not? And then today they just throw him on the retirement list. And there's really been no coverage, no talk, no anything in like, what, two months? Well, I think all, all that happened when he announced it. But, I mean, now is like the time, like training camp, you're reporting training camps. So if you're not there, you're... I mean, I think a lot of people fully expected him to kind of show up at this point, though. I mean, I was kind of... I don't know. If, I don't okay, know maybe not I'm, a lot. Let's say 20, 30%. But, yeah. I mean, the fact that the dude is really not playing this year, that's not getting enough play in my mind. Because, I mean, that... Dude, who does that? I mean, if he needs the time as a break, then take it. But, but does he really think he's going to come back into the NFL after a year off 
and just step back into the role that he had with whatever team, Jaguars, whoever. Don't work like that, man. This is I mean, the best of the best. I mean, he's young. Maybe he can do it. I, I mean, I don't know, maybe Telvin I- with a 65.2 overall rating last year. Lowest rating since his rookie year. 64.8 against the run. And this is where he just was dropped off. A 47.9 grade tackling. Because his angles were horrible. It's like, dude, Telvin, that's like, Telvin's speed is what makes Telvin like yeah. a beast. And so like, he should be able to make, make tackles. Up. He led the team in tackles, but he also led the team in snaps. So take it for what it's worth. I mean, he's still, I, I'm a big fan of Telvin. His pass rush, 68.4, coverage, 65.2. He was consistently like marginal in every grading besides tackling where he was just really below average. And again, I, I guess my whole point with that is that Telvin... I picked an FSU player as my favorite Jaguar defender that wasn't named Ramsey, and I'm kind of getting burned by that. Because I love Telvin, dude. I, I, I thought he was awesome. 2017, the guy was a beast. He was fast. He's flying over the field. He was lighting people up. And last year was the exact opposite of that. So I don't see any reason why somebody like Leon Jacobs can't come in, get 75% of the snaps that he got, and do as well, which was mediocre last year. Yeah, I mean, you just... you you. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Leon Jacobs, I hope, is the guy that steps up. But, I mean, it's it's hard to know because he didn't play a lot last year. Or I guess more I mean, more, more importantly, I think you could plug somebody in there and he could be similar to the way he played last year, maybe. I don't know. I hope so. I mean, Leon Jacobs' grades, I mean, granted, this was 146 snaps compared to Telvin's 1,020. Run defense, 68.8, higher than Telvin's. Total grade, 71. I'm sorry. Total grade, 68.8, higher than Telvin's. Run defense, 71.8, higher than Telvin's. Tackling, 74.1, way higher than Telvin's. Pass rush, 58.6, lower than Telvin's. Coverage, 61.8, lower than than Telvin's. I mean, not bad. Not bad on 146 snaps for a rookie. Plus, have you seen his guns? I mean, the dude's jacked, for sure. That should give him like a couple extra points in every category. Yeah, that's true. We like those jacked guys around yeah. here. Call us what you want, but don't call us for fronts. <laughs> On that note, I think that <laughs> we... Now's the time for a now's break. Now's the huh? time okay. for a break. Um, we're going to take a quick break on here um, on the podcast. Uh, we're going to uh, we're gonna hit you some, with some quick ads. Uh, make sure to support them, uh, whatever they are. Um, and make sure to follow us on Twitter, another Jack's Pod, Facebook, Instagram, another Jack's Podcast. And on the video, we will be back in a couple minutes. All right, welcome back to another Jack's Podcast, episode 76. I just noticed I'm always the one that introduces these. Yeah, because I won't do that. <laughs> I, I don't understand. My introduction would be like, hey, welcome I, back, uh, um, <laughs> Bonsai Tree. Like, I, we do have a Bonsai Tree here. Um, we do have a. I old, mean, if you want me to, I will, but there's no telling what I'll say or like how that'll go. All right, segment three, Joey is going to introduce it. So I will introduce segment three. All you that, Joey that fans out there, make sure to stick around for segment I'm three. I'm good with that because there'll be like a quarter of the people listening at that point. Honestly, segment three is usually our best segment usually because is. we're just like, what? Yeah, let's, let's just, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is there left to talk about? Yeah, let's it, talk. Yeah, and it gets into some weird stuff. But we are talking linebackers. So if you jumped in segment two, which there's no reason why you would do that because this isn't a radio show. But if, if it were, maybe I should introduce this segment because that was pretty awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Joey, nothing I do is awkward because it's only awkward if you make it awkward. And I don't make anything. But if sure. I don't make it awkward, then I'm not having any fun. So, all right, carry on. You were talking about how you, didn't, you weren't having any fun. Yeah, with this, this is episode. boring. Like, Joey is I bored agree, with linebackers. Man. I am bored with linebackers. Wow. I can't talk about pause because he's like just at the gym. Well, why don't doing... we jump to Patrick Jackson's question then? Bring it on, PJ. You, always, that you always make my okay. life more interesting. So And... um. I, I think I get it now, so I'm just going to throw it at you. This is from Patrick Jackson, and he's at... And keep in mind, uh, Joey does not look at any of these I Twitter do punches. not. This is like straight yeah. off the cuff no, yeah. every single time. If you can't tell. I think we can tell. I think everybody can tell. So he's, this is Patrick Jackson. He's at Radius underscore Johansson. And he says, a lot of my favorite non-Jaguar footballers are linebackers. Who is your favorite non-Jaguar linebacker? My favorite non-Jaguar linebacker? <laughs> Really? Uh, Ray Lewis? 
Oh, <laughs> good answer. I wasn't even thinking like old school or retired. You gotta go old school with that, man. I mean, the guy's a beast. I mean, he murdered somebody, got away with it, paid somebody off, had the best career out of any middle linebacker ever, became a Christian, My- <laughs> born again. I mean, by all like regards, and is now like a legitimately nice guy that like is going to be in the booth and stuff, man. I mean, talk about backstory, middle story, after story. Who knows what's going to happen next with that guy? What's next? <laughs> My favorite player is Ray Lewis. He murdered someone and got away with it. And they completely redeemed himself, man. I mean, <laughs> everybody makes mistakes, right? I mean, at least he was smart enough to have like a number two, like a fall guy for it. I mean, hey, Blackman, oh, wh- no. where was your guy? No, like, you know, Matt, J- Matt Jones, where was your guy? You're digging deeper here. Come on. Know. Dion busted it out there, didn't he? What did he say in the, uh, the rookie symposium? He said, like, have a, a handler. Yeah. yeah, these guys make millions of dollars a year. I mean, I'm yeah. not I'm saying that anybody should do anything wrong, but I mean, there's absolutely no reason why you should ever be driving yourself after you've had a few drinks at the bar or something. You should have a guy that does that. I mean, why wouldn't you? This is our new segment we like to call Life Lessons with Joey. I mean, seriously, so, though. Uh, I mean, why wouldn't they? <laughs> hey, somebody has known you before you were famous, before you had money. You pay them 100 grand a year, and they do nothing but make sure you don't do something stupid. The only problem is those people are the people that end up usually stealing from you. That's the yeah, problem. That's true too. Yeah. That's why you cap their salary at a hundred grand. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on. My favorite Jag non Jag linebacker. I really like Luke Keekley. And I know he's just like the best linebacker out there, but like why wouldn't you though? That's no, I mean, he's solid. I yeah. wish that we had a guy like Luke Keekley. And besides, he didn't murder anybody. No, so he didn't. That's probably a better choice. He's got concussions. Yeah. But he can't help that. So I mean, really, there's always a stud linebacker. I mean, I could have gone with Erlacher, I guess. I probably would have Yeah, picked Erlacher's him. a good one, too, I would have gone that I'm not route. even thinking old school, man. Like, I've, I've, like, I mean, currently... I mean, Bobby Wagner's good. Yeah. yeah but I, mean, I, I think most of the ones right now just haven't got to that, like, Hall of Fame level yet, for the most part. Like, they've had good seasons, but there's not, like, that guy. I mean, middle linebacker is an awesome position. I'm just saying, in general, like, you just expect them to play well, show up, be tough, be a defensive leader, and... They don't get a lot of the glory, you know? I mean, they're yeah. not intercepting the ball for the most part. I don't know. I can see Patrick Jackson's point, though, and the reason he's saying that, he, I, I would have to guess, I don't know this for a fact, but I am a defensive-minded, minded like, soccer, English football type of guy, and middle linebacker is kind of like that sweeper position, that stopper position. It's like, you know, he, he sees the field, cuts people off, comes up, makes the hits. So if you're a soccer fan, I mean, that that's kind of kind of ties into that. Remember when you were saying you were bored earlier? Are you asleep? Are you All right? that soccer talk about it put me asleep. Hey, that was like eight <laughs> seconds. If you like soccer too, don't let anybody, don't, don't fool anybody. All right, we have a, a comment on YouTube from our good friend UCF Jaguar. And, the man. And he says, what's going on, fellas? We're bored out of our minds talking about middle like linebackers. Yeah, we should have thought more about adding another position to this position breakdown. But we should have. But, I mean, you can't really add DBs. You can't, add, I mean, maybe safeties and linebackers. Nah, we, no, yeah. no, right. no, 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 I'm gonna, no. We're going to go secondary all on its own. So one, UCF is just chilling right now? He's like just throwing it dude, out Dude, UCF there. Jaguar is, like, absolutely killing it. Like, he is. Dude, his his new, like, uh, YouTube, like, background setting. Dude, that, the intros and, like, the, dude, the cuts and stuff. Like, he's got, if he's doing that, he's dude, got he's skills. killing it, dude. We love UCF Jaguar. My, my man is is absolutely killing. And he doesn't. It. I do, he doesn't have like me, like me. I got you where I can just say, "Hey, man, explain it to him." Like it's all him. Yeah. No, he kills it. I I don't know how I I don't know how yeah. he does it. We're big we fans. Have to get of him his. up here. Like we've said this before. We got to get him up. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I'm sure he'll come up here for a game. Uh, yeah. He says linebackers. Yeah. He says does does Kelvin Smith count as an old school linebacker? If by old school you mean quit on his team? Because <laughs> I don't remember any old school linebacker doing that. No. But you'll have to ask Joey because he's more of the old school uh, historian I mean, here. I think he played that way, though. I mean, 2017, that's why I liked him so much. I mean, he was fast. He hit hard. He tackled. I mean, he was just that guy that, like, you knew he was going to be in the mix. Like, if he didn't make the tackle, he was the second or third guy there, and he was bringing him down. That was his thing. He was just full throttle all the time. And then last year it was like that, but he was just off on the angles and blowing by people. So it was, yeah. Here's, here's what got me about Telvin and sorry to cut you off, no, which fine. I normally do. Yeah, I'm good with that. <laughs> Is it wasn't like the missed tackles got me. Yeah. The bad angles got me. Yeah. But what kills me and I am a big defensive football guy. Like I'm not trying to like, like technique. Yeah. Like I, I coached defensive football for a while. 
Here's what it, what drove me crazy about Telvin is the dude would misread his keys. So okay, stop right there because I'm gonna interrupt you. Okay, what are keys? Keys. Okay, so depending on what position you're at, and different coaches teach different things. When at the snap, at your position, you are reading certain things, like what the other players are doing. Right. So if you're a defensive back, you're reading the receiver across from you. Um, if you're pattern matching, you're watching the two receiver, the inside receiver, because he dictates what the other receiver is going to do. So you can play coverage based on what the slot receiver is doing okay. at the corner position. If you're a D lineman. You're pretty much watching what the lineman is doing in front of you, and depending on what step he takes, that dictates where you're going to go and what kind of block you're going to have to take on. At linebacker, depending on where you're at, your pre-snap alignment, you're going to be looking at a certain position. A lot of times it's the guard. Okay, So if the guard pulls, so if the guard takes a step back and then pulls outside the tackle so or across the line. Can I guess, is that a run play at that point? Yeah, and okay. so you know like you're going to need to scrape or you're going to need to get to a gap and fill a gap. Fair enough. If he pass blocks, okay, then you can guarantee you're probably getting a pass play or you're getting like a really well-designed screen play. Sure. Telvin, but it's going to be coming out of the backfield or a pass play at that point. Right. Telvin got his eyes in the backfield. Telvin misread his keys where he was shooting up to the line of scrimmage on play action. And then trying and that to readjust. is a huge no-no as a linebacker. And it's not, it's like, that stuff you teach middle school and high school linebackers. And to see Telvin do that, something he's never done before, that's what kind of makes me think something's wrong with his head, because he never did that in his career. So missed tackles, I'll live with. Bad angles, I'll live with. But that all ties in together, though. Bad reading your keys at the snap. I mean, if you're in the I'm wrong sorry. position because of re not reading your keys correctly, you're going to make bad tackles because you're not in the right spot, and you're going to have bad angles because you're not even paying attention to what you're where you're supposed to be running at. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it was it was so weird. it's like a whole package. The dude's it was broken. Weird. The dude's broken. Yeah, and, and he was last year, and he probably needs the year off. I don't think he will be able to recover from a year off because I have never seen someone do that before. But I think he may have needed it for his. I mean, I don't know. I can't. I can't comment. Fair because, enough. Yeah. All right. Uh, Brent Papineau on Twitter. I'm sorry, Twitter. Brent Papineau on YouTube does a non linebacker statement. Thank you, Brent. <laughs> Brent just made the uh, fantasy football league right there. <laughs> Brent's definitely in the fantasy football league if he wants to. He says, "Just he's gl just glad we have an actual player worthy of a holdout." It's been a long time since Maurice Jones drew. Great point, Brent. <laughs> Man, I just got so happy. You're right. Like everybody's like, Maddie's holding out. Usually it's like, dude, you can't hold out, or like nobody's gonna hold out because they're just happy to get a paycheck. That's I mean, that's that's a good point. I mean, when's the last time we've had a guy that's been like worthy of a holdout? Other than MJD, who's hold, held out, period. I'm trying to think. Okay, so let's think here. <clears throat> let's say Linder like, jail time doesn't count as a holdout, right? <laughs> okay, just checking. Does okay, if Linder would have held out in twenty seventeen for, which is a stupid to ask because he's like the highest paid center. Yeah. Would you, would, is he worthy of a holdout if Linder holds out? 2017 pre injury? Yeah. He, he has injury history though. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to think here. Um, man, I'm scraping here for a thought here. Um, I mean, because Coughlin like paid everybody in droves and, yeah. you know, that kind of got us in trouble, but Jalen could hold out next year. He's not going to have to though. Yeah. I think we'll pay him. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Interesting. That, yeah, that's a great point. Good take. He also says if he also asked if you were a superstar Jaguar, how would you roll into the bank? Anything really crazy or wild? Oh, dude, I mean, again, I for the people who were not watching YouTube and were listening to the podcast, I'll reiterate what I said earlier because I forgot to hit record. Yeah, because I've, I've been the biggest like Ramsey like critic, but man, dude rolled up like a boss. I mean, you can't you can't do it any better than that. I mean, that was awesome, and I just hope that actually like he's got like a different like vehicle plan for every day of the week like tomorrow he comes in like a mini or something and there's like a whatever i mean like he's got helicopter yeah tank I mean, a tank would be the only <laughs> thing i can think better than that i mean they all drive like sick cars and sick trucks and stuff i mean yeah. i don't know it's a good question like what would i do if i was like the man rolling up in there i mean in my wildest imaginations i could not have thought of a brinks truck no that was great that's I what i'm saying it's like ramsey is a genius that when it comes it, to like the the marketing side of things like like did he nailed it? He, I don't think it could get any better than that. He killed it with the Brinks truck. Yeah. I gotta admit. I mean, I think um, even like a helicopter is more cliched than that. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's true. 
Like, where do you even get a brink strike? Maybe like a Hirsch, and like you put like the jerseys of like all the wide receivers in your division in there. And as you nice. get out of the back of that, you nice. pull the jerseys out and lay them on the ground and just walk off. Nice. That is good. That's yeah. good right there. Do that. Hmm. I like hey, Rams, that. did you hear that? I, even... want, I want to cut if, <laughs> if that gets on the ESPN. All right. Let's move on to a Twitter question. This is from Angus Seymour, and he's at Das Gus. And he says, do you think the number, do you think number 44 will come out with the Miles Jack-O-Lantern this Halloween as part of his candle range? That is genius. Another genius thing, man. I hope the Jags are listening because we are throwing them seriously. I mean, ideas out the wall. Yeah, this is no, nobody is putting this stuff out there. Who was that that said that? This was Das Gus. And he's Angus Seymour. Angus, you need to send that directly to Miles mm-hmm. because that is absolutely genius. Yeah, no, that's good right there. And I'll segue that to the fact that this candle has been burning for almost a month now, and you got a lot of life left in that bad boy. It's a quality candle. It is. A quality, I mean, I'll, I'll admit, I was a little for like, twenty bucks. It's a little pricey, but and it's a little small. But I, dude. that's the thing. I took it. I took a step back. If you're not watching our YouTube uh, live show, which you can find on YouTube, we have a Miles Jack candle burning, and it's and it's a little smaller than I thought it was going to yeah, be. It might be but, what six inches diameter. Yeah, not not too big, if that. Yeah, honestly, four and a half, five. Yeah. Um. It 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 burns well though. It burns really yeah. well. That, what about the scent? How do you feel about the scent? It's, it doesn't give me a headache, which most of them that, do. Yeah, it's 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 soy. Is that what? That's what the difference soy. is. Absolutely, um, which is what you want these days. Yeah. So not a bad candle. Is it a, is it a little overpriced? No, not for soy candles. Soy candles okay. are expensive as all get out. Okay. I, I don't know. I'm not. I mean, I literally bought this because of I just want to support. Miles. Sure. No, soy soy candles are expensive. So okay. It's it's fairly priced. Yeah. But a Miles jack o' lantern. That's good. I would, what would I, like the scent be though? pumpkin dang I'm, I'm dumb dude i'm sorry like i don't like I, my brain does not think yeah like i mean that. dude pumpkin spice i would have three of those outside of my house <laughs> like bam done i don't have to like, carve a pumpkin are you kidding me but gotta, you have to ask your wife's permission to burn three yeah, candles uh, absolutely <laughs> so it'd probably, I, I probably would have any of them out there i got a little bold there but yeah in my mind i would have three out there <laughs> hey you know it's yeah. All the kids would be mad. Like, we can't carve pumpkins this year. I hate you, Miles Jack. It'd go completely wrong. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I guess we can get to a more linebacker, back to our boring linebacker talk here question. That was all linebacker. It was all Miles Jack. Mm, Come on now. This oh, one, okay. mean actual football talk. Yes. Okay. This is from Joe Vandal, and he's at Brady Bauer, too. And he says, can Jake Ryan and Miles Jack both play on the same down? This is the question I've been waiting for all night, and we talked about this in our break just because I want to make sure I was correct in my thought process on it. But absolutely, because Jake Ryan is a middle linebacker by trade. Like, that's, I think, his go-to. Yeah. Miles Jack has been forced to play there, but I think he's way better on the outside. So if Ryan comes in and is really healthy and is going to be dependable, put Jack outside, who cares where Telvin's at? Telvin? Telvin's going to be at home. Yeah. Oh. Meaning, like, who cares if oh. he's there or not? Like... Yeah, so I think we should differentiate between, like, we think like middle linebacker as the guy that plays like in the in like in front of the center. Yeah, because that's what the name says. Yeah, and that's like if you played Madden growing up, like the middle linebacker was. Jason's about to roast me here. I'm not. Ro- I'm not, Joey. I'm never out to roast you intentionally. Okay? But that's the whole point of the show <laughs> is to inform the fans. Yes. The stuff what they don't is, know. Yes. Yeah. So, in reality, what the middle linebacker is is the guy that that pretty much controls the field. He's the quarterback of the defense. He's the general. It doesn't necessarily mean he has to play on top of the center. Miles Jack and Jake Ryan can absolutely play on the field at the same time. And on every base 4-3 package, which is four defensive linemen, three linebackers, they will be on the field at the same time. And I will go out on a limb and say, on nickel packages, I think they'll, they'll be the two linebackers. I think you'll see Leon Jacobs on some plays. But I think Jake Ryan will get the chance to be the starting strong side linebacker. I mean, I would hope so. <laughs> yeah. Who else is going to? I mean, he's got the most experience. I mean, he's played more, as many snaps as Miles Jack. Since this is a positive podcast, I'm going to say that he is going to be a fan favorite this coming year. I think he is too, because the Packers loved him. Yeah. And I understand like the money you had to release him because of the injury. But I mean, he, he seems like one of those guys like they wanted to keep, but they just couldn't. He kind of seems like a younger pause. Yeah, he I really agree. does. He's a sure tackler. 
He gets to the gap. He reads the ball well. He's not quick to jump. I mean, it's also we don't need another speed guy, right? No, I mean our entire defense is speed. Exactly. So we need that guy that's gonna be like Paws was. Paws, man, what are you doing to us? Paws needs to spend time with his family this year and come back. What a whole year to do that. I mean, how much time do you with your family? How much time do you need, man? (laughs) What about those guys that retire and like I got to do something? Golf sucks. Yeah. Well, you know, he may be like that little league coach that trying too hard. (laughs) Who knows? That's gonna be me. So he's got eight year olds crying in Pop Warner. (laughs) (laughs) But. Yeah, I mean, I think Leon J. Jay- I mean, absolutely to answer your question. I mean, for I mean, I expect it honestly. Yeah, I think that's almost a necessity. Yeah, if we don't get anything out of Jake Ryan, we are in trouble. And segment three is going to be all about who's left on the depth chart. But if we don't get anything out of Jake Ryan, we're in trouble. Yeah, that's the bottom line. And also, if Leon Jacobs doesn't step up, second year we are too. Yeah, because then we're leaning on Quincy Williams. Joe Giles Harris, Connor Stration, James Onwalu, and Najee Good. I think and, that might be why I'm saying that like I'm kind of I've been bored with this segment. It's not so much that I'm bored, it's that I don't want to like face the reality of how bad of a situation that can be for our defense if things don't go well. The good news is is that linebackers are like the traditional sense of a linebacker is kind of being changed to where it's not so much a run stuffing gap fitting l- thick linebacker you can can get away with a faster speed guy as long as you have a d line that can kind of you know which we do which we do at least for one more year and when a thing that kind of hangs me up is like the the jags like i know we were down a lot in games and we were playing from behind a lot and teams are going to run when they're in front but we were really bad against the run last year and that's kind of a testament to the linebackers and if that's not enough, <clears throat> the Patriots beat both the Chiefs and the Rams by running the ball down their throat. With who? The running back? Are you talking about? That one draft? Yeah. You want to throw it back out there? Sonny Michelle? I don't know how well he did last year. I haven't looked at this. He was hurt kind of, but yeah. He had I mean, something they to do had with it. I mean, they had all kind of guys back there, but Belichick decided that the trend of the NFL is space and speed. So let's run the ball with power. Why he's the greatest coach of yeah, all time? Yeah, really is, and that's why they won a Super Bowl. So they controlled the clock, and they did what the Jaguars wanted to do for the last two years. And um, well, when you have the threat of Brady and Gronk, you can get away with that, right? I mean, you can't just do that. Hey, but Gronk wasn't really a threat until literally the Super Bowl. Okay, when you have the threat of Brady, you can do that. I yeah. mean, because if that didn't work, they had a plan B. That's true. We didn't. That's true. That's a good point. Even though you are wearing a Bortles shirt now, I'll go ahead and throw that out at this point. My high hater shirt. Yeah. I'm the biggest Bortles fan in Jacksonville. I mean, I understand him leaving, but I'll be the first to defend him and say that he was given a raw deal. He was. I'll go on a limb. You want to know how much I, you know how much I will defend Bortles? I think Cody Kessler got a raw deal. <laughs> I know. You do. Behind this offensive line. <laughs> Eric Flowers. Patrick I know, Omame, was decimated last Shatley, year. I get it. Josh Wells, Parnell, Blake Bell. If that's your and that's that might be the worst six blocking players that you could possibly fashion on Don't an NFL. Don't forget about team. the guy that was working at the Kangaroo gas station that they had to plug in for that one half. <laughs> I mean, he was a big dude, but you know, no football experience. Like it's that was bad and it was bad. If if you think for half of a second that Bortles like Took this dramatic step back randomly in year five no. because of his talent, then you don't follow football very no, well. Dude, he did everything he could to win, and I'm the second most if, Bortles if, fan am, ever. Am I, I saying agree, am but, I saying Bortles should be here? Am I saying Bortles is no. a good quarterback? It was a good change. No. It was time for a change. Yes. I agree, but I, I like I agree. Bortles as well. But did he get a raw deal Absolutely. here? Absolutely. Did, did did he make some decent money? Yes. Yes. He's still making decent money. <laughs> yeah, and he is, but. To think that he got a fair shot last year, you're highly, highly mistaken. How much do you hope that he gets a shot next year? I think he will get a shot next year. How awesome would that be? Yeah. No, he will. And he's going to prove, I mean... Step in with the, the dip in his lip because he ain't quit, even though he had an electric car, and just ball. I, that's it. I'd love it for him, man. I hope he does. Dude, we're all Bortles fans here, and we understand what the front office did. We'd probably make the same move if it was, we were it in was the front the office. It was the right decision. But at the same time, we're all still rooting for Bortles. 
And um, I guarantee you UCF Jaguar is as well, right? I'd have to assume. Um, he probably is, but uh, how could you not be? Oh, he's UCF. UCF fan. You're right. Yeah, Good I mean, point. Like, yeah. Come on. No, nah, he, he for sure is. And AJ Boye. And uh, why Boye? Boye in UCF. Did it really? Yeah, I didn't know that. And then the we have a tight end from UCF too. Can't remember his name. He's gonna get cut, but he was there. <laughs> he's that guy. Yeah. All right, we're going to take one more break and get into segment three. And then segment Which three. I'm going to intro, apparently. Yes, you're going to intro segment three. And then um, we're going to just hit on real quickly the rest of the guys who are going to be fighting for a roster spot in preseason. And to be fair, someone's got to make the team. Yeah. You, you can't roll into the year with, 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 four, with just Miles, yeah. with just Jake Ryan, and just Leon Jacobs. There's only three. They're going to keep at least one or two, two more. For sure. So. Hopefully somebody else cuts somebody halfway decent. And we're going to hit these last couple of YouTube questions in segment three. But give us like a minute or two to uh, refresh ourselves. Get Joey prepped for his intro to segment three. I'm going to meditate for two solid minutes. <laughs> if he hits this. I will be ready. He will be introing all episodes after this if he can hit this. Not well. true. So we'll see. Not true. All right. So give us a quick break. Um, we'll be right back for segment three, which is our favorite segment it is always of the, the entire show. All right. We'll be right back. All right, guys. Well, welcome back to another Jags podcast. That is our last break. You know, got to pay the bills. Hopefully sometime soon we'll be able to pay the bills. But anyway, so check us out on YouTube. Check us out on Big Cat Country. Check us out on iTunes. And as always, follow our Twitter because Jason is the man on Twitter. So I think we are back to our last couple of Twitter questions and maybe YouTube question. Yeah, that was good. I like that. All right. We get, Fair enough. We get this more often. Yeah. Sorry. I've feel very stiff and you feel good that was good okay that was great. good that All was right. really good maybe i'll do that one more time sometime <laughs> oh that's a hey, and he's playing it back there. for me all right so this uh youtube scott wood says what up fellas oh big wood what's up bro <laughs> what up scott we appreciate you watching uh make sure to hit us with any thoughts about the jags uh we will read it and so he just said what's up he said what's up all right so what is up joey well i mean scott's scott's a friend of mine from a long time ago you know, he's not, still, friend, he's not a friend anymore. Well, he still is. He's, he's, <laughs> I used to work with him, and I think he's saying what's up because he came up. He's from Daytona now. Hmm. He moved back, and I missed him last night, and he's kind of mad about that. So Ooh. I think that was like a coded message of mm. like a big, you know. You bailed on him? I couldn't meet up, so, you know. Mm. Yeah. Mm, Sorry, tough. Scott. <laughs> All right. Uh, Brent Papineau on Twitter says, um, will linebacker be a huge priority in the 2020 draft, at least looking forward today? And also he asks, is any free agent linebackers we may target for next year? I mean, I think it all depends on how everybody plays this year coming. I mean, we still have a lot of young guys, some guys trying to prove themselves. I mean, we're going to have to pick up, like you mentioned before the break, who are, you know, teams are going to cut people after preseason. We're going to have to pick up a couple bodies and hopefully they work out. But yeah, I mean, you got to kind of go – Draft wise, with somebody, right? I mean, a little hard to tell going into the college season who's going to be the top linebackers, but hopefully we don't have a high draft pick and get one like in the third round or something, right? I mean, I think it depends on how well Quincy Williams plays because he could be a late round steal. If you haven't watched his highlight film, he is very, very hard hitting linebacker. It's and- good to know because he sounds like a nineteen like seventy three country singer. Well, he's the brother of Quinnen Williams. Who Ooh, that's is, a plus. <laughs> and he is a, uh, I mean, I'm telling you, he, he strokes you. Half of his highlight film hits will be called for legal hits. In oh, yeah, he's a spearing guy. He's a spearing yeah, that guy. Is all, West yeah, Virginia? Uh, Where's he from? Murray State. Murray State, okay. Yeah. He's a racer. That, that, yeah, that guy's A Murray State yeah, racer. That guy is going to hurt somebody next season. Yeah. But um, to the second part of his question, and, and literally he's the only guy that could shake out, that could make, and, and if Telvin comes back, Literally, yeah, but Williams, man, he, he's fast and he ain't scared to hit somebody. So, yeah, I like that. As far as free agents in 2020, um, we're looking at the list right now, and there's some guys that play edge that are that are listed as outside linebackers Von Miller, Jadavion Clowney. Not really what we're talking about here. Fun fact your boy Dante Fowler Jr. will be a free agent in 2020. Any, re- any chance we get a reunion of Dante Fowler and we return to the Dante Fowler podcast? Absolutely no. <laughs> so before you answer that question, though, do you consider, I mean, do you consider Miles Jack a true middle linebacker at this point? 
Uh, no, right? In the sense, in the sense uh, that he, as a as a defensive captain, a field manager, a see, I don't like to get caught up in in the term middle linebacker because when sixty percent of your snaps are played in nickel, who, what does middle linebacker mean? Like that's that that's my only thing. Can he help the younger guys make sure they're in the right position? Make sure they're Absolutely. picking up their cover. You, Absolutely. You fully believe that he's yes. capable of that from a mental standpoint. Yes. yes. And this right. year, I think, will, will be his prove it year. And I think this year he will earn himself a contract that will make us all forget about Telvin Smith. That's my bold prediction. Segment three, bold prediction right there. I'm on board. Bobby Wagner will be a free agent, a 0% chance he hits the market. Um, Seattle will do probably everything they can to re side him. Nigel Bradham, Jabal Sheard, free agents. Nigel Bradham's will be 30, 31. That could be a guy that I just have a feeling Nigel Bradham's the type of guy that the Jags would bring in. Ex Florida State player, solid, been good for a while, never like impressed. I mean, he's been good. I mean, he played, had, a good, had a good career with the Bills, had a decent career with the Eagles. That's a guy you might be able to see. Um, Danny Trevathan from the Bears will be oh, 31. Danny. I that's a guy. I mean, again, I mean, there's there's gonna be people out there, and that are available. Whitney Merciless. I know he's technically a D end. He's again, he's in that he's that three four outside linebacker that considered a linebacker, but not quite there. AJ Klein. I can't imagine New Orleans will get too far from him. It depends on what he demands in the in the open market. Some guy, someone might overpay for Klein, and the Saints may not be able to resign him. With with Davenport on the team, I don't know. Outside of that, you're getting pretty thin. I mean, Terrell Suggs is on this list, which he's like ninety, <laughs> thirty eight, which is ninety in in football terms. Yeah. Michael Kendricks, who can't land anywhere. I mean, Shaquille Barrett. I, there's there's talent there. Linebacker may be a position that. And maybe Dave Caldwell and Tom Coughlin have looked to 2020 and said, we have a good chance at getting a solid linebacker in that free agency. So we're not so worried about this year. Yeah. yeah. That's putting a lot of faith in those guys. Yeah. But I would say that that's the group. I mean, they would do that. But I'm sure every team's doing that. I mean, there's going to be a, I mean, there's a lot in 2020 as far as edge and linebacker. So, I mean, at this point, we've talked about every position group outside of what? Defensive D-line backs, and secondary. S- secondary, D-line, and kickers. And punters. And punters, because that's going to be my favorite segment <laughs> of the year. But with that being said, outside of our wide receiver core, I mean, I would say, well, not even that. Is middle linebacker our scariest position, yes. death-wise? Yeah. But, I mean, I think it has to be, right? I mean... Golly, so, I mean, man. wide receivers, you could pick we've, somebody up. We've had this same conversation about tight ends. Yeah. We had so this we like same... Th- yeah. Man, so much for optimism. I'm Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm back. Okay. I'm back. <laughs> now, this is my optimistic face. Let's not forget about our undrafted free agents that I am on fire about. I do want to hear about this. Okay. Guy. So, here's one that I am a firm believer in. Joe Giles Harris out of Duke. 6'2", 234. Ran a 4740, not terribly fast. But here's the thing. As a redshirt freshman in 2016, he started all 12 games and he was named honorable mention all ACC and he was freshman all American. He led Duke with 107 tackles and four sacks. Okay? He earned first team all ACC honors his sophomore season and he made nine starts in 2018. He he missed the final four games with an MCL sprain. This dude is a good linebacker. He's a traditional inside linebacker. He's not terribly fast, but he has really good instincts. Not totally big either. I mean, 6'2", 234 is good enough for an inside linebacker. Yeah, I guess if you hit hard. He makes up for his speed limitations because of his like he has like really good like game sense and like instincts. Well, if you want to do he's gotta be smart, right? I mean Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. And he's he fills gaps well, he tackles well, and um, I think he'll find a way to stick around. Here's the stat that sums up Joe Giles Harris. He averaged a hundred tackles and ten and a half tackles for loss over three years at Duke. That's pretty huge. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's getting into the backfield that quickly with that kind of speed, so he's obviously reading defenses. 
and knows where he's going and what they're doing to get there. And it's not like he's playing in the Big 12. Yeah, I mean, he's I playing mean, some good schools. SEC. Yeah. Playing some good schools. I mean, he's playing Clemson. He's playing Florida State. He's playing Miami. He's playing NC State. He's playing school. Wake Forest, Syracuse. <laughs> I mean, powerhouses. Sorry. He's not in the Pac-12, okay? So. I'm an SEC homer. Come on, yeah, I got to throw some jabs in there. I know. All right. Here's what's sad, man. The guys that have experience in the NFL, like I fully expect to get cut. I think our undrafted free agents are incredibly better than our guys that have experience. Rameek really? Wilson, Najee Good, terrible. Najee Good with the Packers had, <laughs> and with the Eagles last season, had a 38.4 PFF rating. 38.4. Dude, it, go, it goes I, that low? Bro. <laughs> like, seriously. What does that mean? Like he, I could go out there, at the coach would tell me, "Hey, you need to be seven by two, so seven yards deep, two yards outside of the tackle." I could stand there, and do better than that, and do better than thirty-eight point four. Yeah, just like kind of wave your arms around, and like, in like, somebody comes near you, try to tackle them. Like no lie, like my ninth grade year playing football in high school, I was terrified of everything. And when like a guy would be like going, yeah, to, you're like, I'm gonna get crushed, <laughs> and, and like, and like when there's a play happening. And there was a guy being tackled You'd to like wrap to him up the with ground. Him? I would jump in onto Heck the yeah. pile, and I'm like, "Yeah, I was there. I got an assist." That That's would give half. me a better grade than a thirty-eight point four. What is? Can you get a zero? I mean, like, what is the lowest? It's got to be like <laughs> pretty close to that, right? I think that's got to be the lowest. Kinda like showing up for the yeah. game gets you twenty-five. Yeah. So wow. I mean, although he he's like an eight-year pro, he may be the most experienced guy on the roster at linebacker, which is incredibly sad. I don't think he makes the team. Rameek Wilson, we talked to him earlier. Nah, no good. James Onwalu out of Notre Dame. I think he's got some possibility. Like He's got some nah. potential, right? No, not nah. at all? I mean, he's been on two teams in two years, never played a real snap. I per- like, like I said, Connor Strachan. I don't know if it's Strachan or Strachan. I don't know. I don't know him. Six foot, 230, short and stocky out of Boston College. Not very athletic. Um... He's very instinctive. He's good with his hands. He can like shed blocks. He's, he can move laterally and in space pretty well. And he, he basically he he's, he could be a, a backup linebacker and a special teams special teamer. Um, but with his instincts and his intensity and his ability to always he seems to make positive plays. And I think that's what him and Joe Giles Harris bring to the table that these other guys don't. So. I have no idea who's going to be on this roster at linebacker. I think I'm going to go back out with what I said earlier as my bold prediction from that core is that Lorente McRae is going to get a lot more snaps in, in not a traditional position for him because of weaknesses elsewhere. I don't know how he could play out. I mean, I, I just don't know. I'm not saying like, I'm not saying that he's done it. I'm saying that he's got the size. He's, got the football knowledge, he's got some experience. I think they're going to have to plug him in there at times to make do. If there is an injury, if there is something doesn't work out, or you're going to see him in there, man. There's no way you can't unless we just get some awesome pickup from another team of like, hey, they were loaded at this position. This guy didn't make the, the team. We cut him and the Jags snatch him up, which I mean, there, should, there could be a lot of guys out there that they're looking at. We tend to do okay in that realm, but at this point, right now, if everything being equal, that guy's getting some snaps in those positions. So, Lorente McCray had 100 snaps last season. 25 of them were on run plays, and 73 of them were on pass rush snaps. That doesn't equal 100, so I'm a little confused on what PFF has again, on PFF. here. I'm assuming that there is some special teams. Let me throw this out there, though. I guarantee you it was over 38. <laughs> His run defense snap, his run defense grade, 48. Bam. <laughs> Next. 48.9 against the run. However, his, against, the, against the pass on pass rushing, 74.7. And there's no secret he's a better pass yes, rushing player. absolutely. And that's what I'm trying to say is I, I, don't, I think he's an edge guy. He's not a linebacker. But I think he could fill in if needed is my point. And he's going he's gonna to have to unless we get somebody else on the squad. I would rather have one of those undrafted free agents than I would – than than Lunate McCray at linebacker. I like Lunate McCray, and I think with a solid opportunity to play. I mean, he had a sack on seventy three pass rush snaps. Is yeah, that is that's that pretty that good, good percentage? I mean, I, 
Yeah. Give him a thousand. Tw- okay, twelve pressures. All oh. right, so seventy-three thousand. That's ten. He would have almost thirteen sacks if he got a thousand snaps. Good point. See you, Telvin. Wow. How about this? Twelve pressures on hundred snaps. That is good. That's actually really good. That's actually really good. Way. Yeah, that's over. I mean, that's obviously over ten percent. Yeah. Of pressures on pass rushing snaps. No, pass rushing snaps is at seventy three. Let's even let's even let's do the math yeah. here. Let's do the math yeah, here, I can't boys. Do that in my head. We got calculators right here. All right, so he had seventy three snaps, and then he had twelve pressures. That's seventeen percent of the snaps on passes he had pressures. That's I'll insane. take that. Are you kidding me? That's almost one out of every five. That's insanely good. But of course, it was against like crappy teams because he's in the game. I would have to assume. Right? I would disagree. No. I don't know why. So people a but I just, I just want to disagree with you. Breather? No, I just want to disagree with you. I have no legitimate. You don't backing. disagree with me enough anymore. <laughs> I, so I like that. That makes me feel good. Well, you know, we I gotta, don't know why I'm wrong, but I feel like I'm wrong. So, all right, carry on. That's it. I mean, that's that's our depth. We're not very deep at linebacker, and um, I think it goes back to the fact that like the Jags, like they could be, they could win 13 games. They could win five games. I mean, we've got this the spectrum of like I no. We, got, we need to do the schedule. Do you really think that? I mean, we're we're obviously gonna have an episode where we talk about this. Of schedule, course, but do you really think five games is the floor? No, I'm exaggerating. I don't think thirteen games like, is like the top like, either. But we could be segment. eleven games or maybe seven. You know, eleven wins or seven wins. I mean, maybe in that yeah, range. But that's that's a fair. That's but a it's a range. pretty wide range, especially compared to last year. And there's just a lot of unknowns. I mean, we have a lot of like strengths. We have a lot of like. Hey, we're going to be top five defense in these categories. We've got a quarterback that's won the MVP. They stepped in. Like, he could be just the bomb and blow all the expectations out of the water. We got a running back that, if he got his head straight, could do that. I mean, we've got wide receivers that, hey, second, third year, they might make the leap coming off an in- knee injury. They might, you know, continue the leap that he had made. I mean, it's just like all these expectations that are if, 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 hopefully, but if they don't, Kind of like a normal Jags preseason, right? So without looking at my computer, which I think you're doing, I'm not. I, dude, my eyes are so bad. I can make out a green like <laughs> leaf on your computer and a blue top bar. What do you think Vegas has us at wins this year? Seven, eight. All right. I think that's strong. Do you think we hit that over or under? I eight and eight is what I pick us to go at, like without going game by game. So that's a. I mean, Vegas is. They're spot the, on. Yeah, they're always spot on. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think you can't. What are the odds? I mean, if you, for the over, like, what do you get? No, I mean, no, like, eight is the line. Oof. I'd be scared to say over, man. Honestly. I would bet a lot of money on the over. And I don't gamble. That's only because wink, you're wink, being nudge, nudge. optimist. This is, this is me outside the optimist. This is me, like, I, I'm not a gambler because if you're a gambler, like they don't let you get like certain credentials. Because well, gambling is yeah. illegal, and yeah, yeah, and I want credentials, so I'm yeah. not a gambler. No, but if I were to gamble, sure, I would gamble a lot of money on the over. A lot of money on the over. Do you think that's going to change drastically between now and the first game of the season? Unless there's an injury, no. Unless Nick Foles gets hurt, no. I mean, that's got to be based off our strength of schedule as much as absolutely. Anything, I mean, but from five wins to eight, it's not a big leap. That's pretty big. Eh. Most teams don't move that much, dude. When you sign a great quarterback and like then, nothing else, you get everybody else back healthy, and your defense is almost as good as it's ever been. I mean, the only the only other teams with a bigger like jump from last season to Vegas is the Niners and the Jets. Well, there's always a team that made the playoffs last year that doesn't, and ones that didn't and do. I mean. Why would you not think the Jaguars would be the top spot to be the team that didn't make the playoffs that will? Because I mean they were there two years ago. I agree with you. That's why I think injury, eight, so that's why eight, I think that's why eight is right, a steal. You might have talked me into it, but I'm not betting over on that. I'm you, a prove it to me guy at this point, man. But if you okay, so let's say you had to bet. If I had to bet, like if my life depended on right. it, there's a gun to your head. Yeah. Take the over, the under, I'm taking the over. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree. And that's where I'm at too. Uh, there's no way we can be as decimated last as as we were injured no last year. There's really no way. Foles is 
light years above as far as a consistent quarterback with more upside potential than Bortles. Fournette has got his back to the wall as far as if I want to keep getting a paycheck, so there's got to be some motivation there. We've got receivers, one coming back from injury that was our best receiver, and younger guys that, again, the longer you're in the league, the better you are as a receiver. They've got speed. DD's shown the grit. I mean, we've got good special teams players. We've got a solid kicker that's not going to miss anything. We have one of the best a secondaries, solid if not the best secondary. That's not going to miss anything. That's key, man. Everybody complains when the kicker's <laughs> missing extra points and field goals. They don't complain when he's not, yeah. but that's an important part of the dang yeah, game, man. And he's true. got a leg. That's true. And we have the best secondary, maybe top five secondary in the league, at least. Defensive line, offensive line healthy is solid. I mean, we've got a lot to be happy about. So, yeah, I'll take the over. I agree. Everything but the kicker. You don't think Lambo's the bum? Well, I mean, he missed, like, he had a pretty bad last two games of the season. So, who cares at that point, though? Kickers can be streaky. They're kind of like golfers. Yeah, but were you, like, he probably wasn't even watching the game at that point. Uh, that's true. I mean, it kind of hurt. I think kickers are a little different. Let's not get into kickers. Let's just end the show. How about that? It's a horrible way to end the show. On, kick, on Josh Lambeau? Lambeau's the man. <laughs> well, that's the end of our linebacker <laughs> podcast. I can't believe we even made it this long I on, can't either, on linebackers. Man. Thank I'm, you to everyone who commented on YouTube. Yeah, if it wasn't for that, man, I would have had to like that's bash true. myself in the head with my cup. And that's why we're a fan show, because without the fans... This episode would have been 30 minutes long because our linebackers are pretty trash outside of Miles Jack. And that's the bottom line. Bottom that's line. how I can sum it up. Any last words on linebacker? No, but I'm excited about the fantasy league because I just rattling through the Twitter questions, there's like four or five guys that dominate the Twitter questions. Yeah. And I want to play fantasy with every one of them. So that sounds like a lot of fun. And if there's four or five guys that dominate, that means there's still four or five spots up yeah. for grabs. So get in, make some, make, just ask some questions for the, for the uh, podcast and for the YouTube show and you'll get in. I mean, it's literally yeah. free and you get free prizes. Like we're going to send you like it'll be good. Miles stuff, Jack too. candles. We're yeah. going to send you like apparel, hopefully some AJP gear at that point. AJP gear. Got to be coming soon. Yeah. So make sure to get in there. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I hate to say that I'm going to win. I don't hate to say it. I'm going to, are win. you the commissioner? I am going to be the well, commissioner. Well, then, yeah, Jason's going to win. I will not do anything shady, and it will be all up on the up and up. But Jason I, will do shady I stuff. am a, I, I legit am, <laughs> I know kidding, what I'm doing. Kidding, kidding. Jason has run many leagues. He knows what he's doing. I, and, and I he's just, got a whole I library know, full of leather-bound books. That's true. That's true. I mean, I, I smell them at times just to, <laughs> just to, you know. Thanks for listening to episode 76, Linebackers Podcast. Make sure to like us on YouTube. Like our, our iTunes. Like, give us a five-star rating. It, it helps us um, go on and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're like we're we're uh, we're in segment three, so none of our sponsors are listening. Yeah, so we're, we're we would rather we would rather you subscribe to our YouTube than anything else because we Agreed. like we. I mean, we we're not here for the money. We obviously. Want, <laughs> we want <laughs> we want you guys we want interaction with you and we've noticed way more interaction on YouTube so subscribe to our YouTube ask us questions and comments on YouTube and then uh, we'll get there we're loving what's going to happen on YouTube lately and I mean the season hasn't even started yet and we're we're hitting like a thousand downloads yeah like between the, the different areas yeah and the more interactive the better I mean so YouTube like you said like as we're doing the show those questions were fantastic that yeah. made everything fun tonight Really appreciate that, guys. Keep it up. For sure. Thank you for listening. And um, as always, go Jags. Go Jags. Mm-hmm.